Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into this episode of Real Talk Fishing. Today we're going to talk to the river rat himself, Mr. Joe Ocado. Been fishing the AIM River Circuit recently and want to get a dig in and just find out all the ins and outs about that. Uh, Joe's launched a new YouTube channel or relaunched his YouTube channel to say. And just talk yardcraft boats, all the things Joe knows. Joe's a good friend, longtime tournament angler, has been around this uh, fishing world for quite some time and is one hell of a nice guy. So let's go see what Joe has to say. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Real Talk Fishing with No Limits. We're heading over to talk to the river rat himself, Mr. Joe Okada. The guy's been taking aim over there on the AIM River Walleye Series. And, Joe, I, I want to hear all about that because I'm a river rat myself and you have definitely turned yourself into one <laughs> no i'm far from a river right but that's why i'm doing it because that's like one of our that's one of my biggest weaknesses is is learning you know getting a feel for all those rivers and that's what's fun so yeah that's that's the, I'm playing in them. That's, that's the best way to conquer the weakness right is, is do it I, I i have mine and i do the exact same thing if i suck at it i do i practice at it more so i don't suck at it because we got to be pretty uh versatile in this tournament angling spectrum because we go everywhere and do everything that's right oh. yeah you know, we were just down in the illinois river and that was that was a fun little warm-up with I, I got to get the vertical jigging sticks out and that's a little more forgiving down there because you can play with heavier jigs and the saugers don't seem to mind too much so it, even if you're not the world's best vertical jigging you can still it, it's still not that hard to do there the that was what the, the uh, you got to warm up, but I don't think you were really all that warm at the Spring Valley Tournament. <laughs> it looked kind of cold. It was warmer than last year, though. That's for sure. Last year, it was in the 20s yeah, and blowing 30, and it was just miserable. Although we did find a good little stretch of river that was a little more protected. But but yeah, this, this year, the sun peaked out a little bit, aside from the sleet and snow, and it was... Well, it's Spring Valley. It's what, what, what do you expect? Right, you could, right. could have been in the fifties leading up to it, and you know what's going to happen on the day of. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, there practicing for that NWT while you guys were fishing at NWC the week ahead last year, and I, I sat in the parking lot that day and I watched a lot of guys come in real early on day two and went. There's not <laughs> as many people even out there because a lot of guys didn't even go out because their things were froze up. I mean, it's you just it's just hard on the boats, man. It's just tough. It is. And you had a lot of debris in the water. I mean, the fishing wasn't wasn't horrible. I mean, but it wasn't a typical Spring Valley. It looked like a lot of limits, like a lot of a lot of fish were caught this time. Yeah, a lot of fish were caught. Some guys, uh, the first day, Jason Klein and his boy, they had almost 19 pounds, which is a huge weight for their. That's almost a two-day total. <laughs> when you catch a 29 or 30, I don't even know how big it was, a well, yeah. upper 20-inch walleye, that, that, that does help the cause a little bit <laughs> when it can swallow my entire bag of saugers that I brought in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can get a walleye in that tournament, that's that's kind of gold when that happened. Obviously, J.J. Bernardi got that for the NWT and brought in three fish. But when you bring in a seven, eight pound walleye, you just equivalent to most of our bag of saugers, right? So, yeah. And there must was, be uh, more and more of them in that river, you know? I think, I mean, yeah, I, think I was you... having dinner that night, Saturday night with John Ballett down at the Bass Classic. Uh, Bassmaster Classic, and he fishes that a lot, and has fished that tournament a lot. And that's what he said: if there's a a lot more walleye are moving down into that system, so we anticipate just to kind of get better over the next few years. Cool. Maybe actually start targeting them. I, I mean, maybe you can already. You know, what was interesting is you 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 creep up into those seams and the and the and the slower the really fishy looking spots, and your graph just lights up with life crawling all over. And it's mostly Asian carp is, is what you found. <laughs> yeah. But you could say there, if I was if I was a ten pound walleye holding a pile of eggs and I didn't want to be sitting out in the main river channel right now, I'd be sitting right here. Now, how do I? I, I just couldn't figure out how to get fish out of those fishiest spots. So we ended up just joining the club in the you know channels edges and even the main channel the river was dropping day to day oh, okay. so that whole river drops the, the life continued to flush out into the middle of the river channel and you could catch them from one end from one bank to the other and all the way into the middle so you pull them three ways probably or jigging vertical jigging you said right I both I'd, I'd troll upstream with a stacker rig yep. and that's just two inline floaters behind each other and then when we got bored of that we'd 
bring them up and then just jig our way back down. And then jigging was way more fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did you uh, go down to the High Lines area? I think it's called. Yeah, we, we went all the way. We, we went down just below Hennepin at the furthest. Oh, yeah. Down River Point. And then we um, and then but we kind of just hung out in the Peoria area for the majority of the tournament, especially once our back was against the wall after day one. We were in, we were sitting in 37 and uh, that was the only place we actually caught walleye in practice. Right. And I've, I mean, if, if we were going to get that lucky unicorn, yep. it was going to come from there. And, uh, so that's kind of where we hung out. We were hung out to dry for the second day when things got a little tough. Yeah, I caught one or two walleye at practice, and they were both up closer to the dam, and that just kind of seems like that's where those walleye are that time of year. So yeah, yeah. Last year I caught a a nice like a five pounder up there, and we never even really messed with it up there too much in practice. Well, I only practiced for two days. We just kind of locked into a couple stretches, and just that's kind of where where it was at for but us. Did you pull any flies? A little bit. I, I yeah. had them ready to go for the tournament. I, one thing I was worried about was it being overly congested on our starting spot. And so if it's if it's super busy, instead of just trying to plow through with plugs and weave your way in and out of people, I wanted right. to get a slower presentation where you could kind of creep and tack and, and just really work specific stretches of that channel edge nicely without without trying to you know oh i just missed it on my trolling pass so now i got to go back for another one and you know if you're if but then if you pull the flies out or, or three ways with live bait or something like that then you can really take your time and be thorough in those spots so i was prepared to do that but we just we just kept pulling plugs <laughs> just kept pulling plug. we always have a plan and something we want to do but then you just sometimes you forget, and yeah. other times it just doesn't work, or then you get done and you're like, "Damn it! If I would have did that, I know that was the trick." Oh, you know, the hindsight. And, yeah, right. The uh, you know, what if I would have, should have, could have. Uh, yeah. I want to get into flies. You've been dialing that in, but before we get too far, I like to think everybody know who Joe Okada is because you should. But I think you know this industry's growing, and we're getting some new people, and this podcast is going up pretty good blowing up a lot more than i anticipated so we have new people out there so for those those new guys or you know not even just young guys getting in and gals just new people in general let's give them a little background on on joe where he comes from um what you're doing when you're not fishing which is still fishing yeah uh, you know and where they where they can find you i know you got your kind of reinvented your youtube you got that going good so yeah no i've uh i was kind of born and raised in south central wisconsin uh, close to the Madison Chain of Lakes, which is a series of inland lakes here that are really fertile and um, diverse. And that's kind of where I cut my teeth in, in fishing. I uh, still live in the area here, so I've been fishing those lakes my whole life. Um, as soon as I got out of high school, I started guiding on that chain of lakes and did that for almost 20 years. Um, slowly have tapered off in the guiding, but the guiding is what helped you know, build the skill sets to eventually start competing in tournaments. And I started doing that in about 2008 on the Pro-Am side, uh, played around in team tournaments leading up to that just to build some experience. And then um, over time, it just kind of leaned more heavily on the tournament scene. And uh, through relationships that I built through tournament fishing, ended up kind of uh, I mean, for, for my job when I'm off the water now that to, to take over what I was doing guiding is just kind of started my own one-man band advertising agency to, to help out some of those partners that I continue to help out today. And so that's kind of what I do when I'm, when I'm not fishing. And then when I'm, when I'm fishing, I'm just trying to hone skill sets that, I'm, that you need to work on hard and, uh, and so that you can, so you can still stay competitive when it's time to play, you know? Um, so that's kind of what I've, that's kind of a quick 20 plus year history of what, what I've done. It's <laughs> down um, and dirty. Yeah, that is. And, it, and, uh, but, but no, every, every step along the way has kind of, you know, through relationships and just through experience building has just kind of kept me in the industry in one facet or another. And, and hopefully we can continue that for many more years to come. Well, that's that's how this industry rolls, right? You know as well as anybody. It's all about the relationships, and and you've been with Yamaha and other places for for a long time, and Yardcraft, right? So doing stuff with the the Yardcraft boats, and yeah, 
I yep, know those are them uh, since 2014, and then uh, started doing some of their um, advertising and media stuff in 15 or 16, and then have been doing that ever since with them. And yeah, things are good with them. So. Yeah, Kinger was on and gave us a big update on how the, all the R craft stuff's going, and and uh, sounds like it's good. So, I mean, the boat market is the boat market right now. <laughs> but, you know, when you build a good product, it's it uh, it makes it through the ups and downs and stands the test of time. So, there are ups and downs, no doubt. Yeah, and when it's up, it's ridiculous, and when it's down, it's just like a light switch hit. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and I think you know it's this this COVID crap from a few years back it it's still an issue it's still it caused a lot of the problem in a sense right supply and demand um and now here we are with now we have plenty of supply but you know demand's dying because you know, people are back to work and they're not going oh. fishing every day and, and but when things inflate the you don't ever hear about the deflation process in the economy because it, it doesn't come back down you know no. very very little gas no. goes up and down and fuel food may move a little bit but the boats have went whoop like this <laughs> and they're probably you know they'll, they're gonna damn near stay there so they are i don't see them going back down anytime soon i still remember it wasn't that long ago brian remember when you know 30 to 50 grand was i mean was a chunk of change to invest into a boat and here we are we're i mean that's where we're at with electronics and engines now before <laughs> that's just had the fiberglass yeah that's just so, the, i remember my first ranger was sixty eight thousand. wow which was and i wouldn't i guess that was a little while ago but now it's you know that's a hundred that's almost double that price now for that same so, boat and yeah. that same boat is still out there nothing and the is, fish aren't twice as big <laughs> no and the uh you know you're talking a lot of tournaments and i don't the payouts haven't gone up you oh, know, but, <laughs> right it's, you're not making any more money there's a lot of noise out there in the bass world i just got off the phone with somebody talking about this and and uh we just we'll just hit on it a little bit that because you do you, you know you've been doing the aim stuff you did the head-to-head thing which is cool you did nwt for years what what's joe going to do this year you sticking with the aim river series uh, actually, I just talked to my buddy Galen, over, uh, who lives over by the Mississippi. He's partnerless for this season, so I told him I'd hop in a couple with him. I uh, might hop in with another buddy up on the pool two or three. Who's so Guy? Maybe, what Guy? That's your guy. Who's Guy? My oh oh Guy Guy Engelbretson. He uh, he's fishing with his son again this year, who who okay. has a little time freed up. That was super fun to fish with him last year because we never we've always bounced. We, we've always communicated. And, right. and, but we, and fish a few times a year, but we never got to devote time to fish as a team together. And that was a lot of fun. And he was one patient dude because it, it's, it's, it's hard <laughs> to find it, Finding a good teammate is hard, you know, because yeah. you, everyone, they, you have to compliment each other and you just have to, no matter how the flow of the boat's going, you, you have to work together. I, I, but when you, that's, that's one thing that I really liked about that season on head to head is it was it, it was fun i mean it's just just you in your boat against just me and my boat and and by the by the fourth day of being on the water you're still in practice mode so you're still flying by the seat of your pants and it's it, it, it but it's but it's just you and your thoughts and your program i mean it's just, yeah that was that was one of the, that was the most enjoyable year i've ever had tournament fishing but then to get to fish with great friends like guy um, Robert Blosser, I fished a bunch of tournaments with him over the years. I just getting to fish with some of your best friends is pretty special too. So I cut you off, but you're going, you got a partner now and you're going to do the river series again. A couple of them. I'm or a couple I, of them I, 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 with scheduling this year. Um, I'll probably play in one or two NWTs, some aims. Um, let me guess red wing and green Bay might no, be a couple uh, of your favorite actually, places. No? <laughs> probably come out to erie because that one is oh. open on the schedule and i haven't been to erie in years uh so it, it's i'm due to get out there and cool. fish on a lake with 100 you. million walleyes yeah, swimming around. Right. <laughs> you know you'll catch it as long as it doesn't turn into a mud hole you gotta catch I, fish I hope so. so yeah right. and, I, and i and i haven't been out there since you know i've, I've played with my forward facing and so like i said it's been years prior oh. to 2021 was the i think 2020 was the last year of the or 2019 even was the last year I was out there. So I just want to see 
I, I, around here we have lots of drum and right. carp, which you, which you also have out there, but you also have mega schools of walleyes swimming around. I just want to see a bunch of walleyes swimming around and try to catch them. So. You uh, you got to focus on the forward facing technique out there, like I, I all the rest will. of us, I imagine. I mean, you have to, right? That's that's what it's you know, for. Actually, on Erie, I think if there's one place you don't have to, it's Lake Erie. I think. Oh, yeah. I, I think a, a good portion of checks will be cast just pulling meat or traditional cranks, cranks through yeah. wads. But of, I mean, of the... but you got to try the forward facing. I mean, I think oh, you're going to see well, everybody yeah. try it because why the heck not, right? <laughs> so well, yeah, that's what that's that, and that's the main reason I'm going. I just want to I just want to continue to expand. I, I want I want it to be a training week for me, and 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 try to be better at the end of the week because of it. So that's my main reason for going out there. And yeah, but maybe Green Bay too. Um, that'll be fun because by Green Bay, most of you guys will still have points on your mind, and with right. that three fish limit that they put in there, yep. you know, you'll be, you you'll be have tempted to box a five to six pound fish just to save your season, and I can yep. toss them back and. <laughs> And wait for my bigger bites. <laughs> yeah, and and you know that lake, and you know where to get them. I know you've had some monster bags, and uh, it, that plays right into your hand. They're perfect. I mean, I imagine like Woodkey's going to be in the same situation if he's just fishing one. It's you know, here's the three or four hammers you better watch out for because they don't have points on the line, and they know where to catch them and how to catch yeah. them, Megan's. Oh, and if, if it might actually Red Wing might open up too. I don't think Sakakawea just the way the late summer scheduling was going. I don't think I can make it out there, but. Um, but maybe Red Wing too, because that's a fun place to play. And you guys, now you can fish Wisconsin yep. for that one? Is that true? Okay. Yep. And you can fish the whole system. Of course, sounds like the water's so low you can't get around right now. <laughs> um, but we're going out of Treasure Island, not Red Wing. Okay. So we're going to be up to pool three, and it's four walleye, one over 20. Four fish. Yep. Hmm. One man limit everywhere. Okay. So... I don't well, know. that'll be interesting. Um, yeah, because it's Red Wing. We know there's big, you know, there's biggins in there. You can catch yeah. them two as a separator, but one, you know, one over twenty should be feasible. And there's some big sauger in there. Um, so yeah, it's you know, it'll probably be some pretty close weights in that one. It'd be kind of like a South Dakota tournament. Are you except... doing all of the NWTs this year? Yep. Nice. Nice. That is the plan. So we'll uh, cool. take one at yeah, a time. Man, and... Just gonna just gonna hop around to whatever is available when I am free, and and we'll we'll, we'll play where I can. But yeah, the, the river should be fun again this year. That's just a whole. It, it it you know, I've got a year under my belt now on some of those pools, and I got to do a lot of exploring. But it's it still feels like new water on every spot whenever you roll up on stuff. It it I know a lot of rocks don't move, but the water fluctuates and. It's, uh, yep. it's a different system every time you go, and the fish. The, the timber can move. Yes, it but can. the water level does, and all of a sudden there's rocks you didn't know were there, and that are there, and I mean, there's not a whole lot of hidden underneath the water anymore with all our electronics, right? But yeah, when the water level's low, you find new stuff, and when it's high, you find new stuff the hard way sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, but it, it's yeah, it changes. It might move six inches to a foot on you in a day, and everything's out the window, right? That's Those right. fish are now they're sliding up tighter and. And then you have exposed wing dams, and yeah, it's just I, don't, I love the river, the Mississippi River, the Missouri River. I those, I those caught myself awesome. last year playing. Try I, last year I caught myself trying to rely too many on, on several spots what I was hoping to see, but then uh, the right cast through the right spot was still extracting fish that you didn't know were there. And that's one cool thing about the Mississippi is that it's it's like the 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 fish can still tuck in stuff and be hard to pick out sometimes. And so still setting, you know, boat positioning and making the right cast and giving a spot a chance, even when your eyes are telling you to just pick up and bolt is, is still there. So it's, it still leaves a little, you know, there's still a little uncertainty under the water line, even though you, we've got everything we need to hopefully expose everything at the same time. But right. when, when, when you roll up to a spot and everything looks right, it's still worth a cast on a Mississippi. That's, there's no doubt about that. And it can just it just it can just keep reloading, you yeah. know, throughout the day. And you can go back day after day if you hit you know the right spot and be like, I don't know, I caught twenty pounds out of this yesterday. And you go in there next day and you catch twenty five or thirty. Yeah. You know, it's just it just there's rivers for you, That's especially rivers. the Mississippi. 
So a lot of those pockets are obviously just off the current or off the channel. So those fish slide up and especially this time of year when they're looking to, to spawn and pre-spawn. Yeah, the Mississippi is awesome. And I foresee it in the future of NWT is probably a, at least, you know, once a year. But I mean, it used to always be a couple rivers and a couple bigger bodies, if not a great lake. That kind of looks like the theme moving forward. And uh, I think you'll see either the Missouri and Mississippi probably in play every year one way or the other. So I wouldn't doubt it. it it's it's cool. And those, those, those fishermen out there, the river rats out there are – hard to beat because yeah, they, just, they, they just know where that one big one will set up and live and they and they just have a, a run to a milk run of those spots to go and they did they, they're they're just so intimate with that river and you know they yep. can look at the boat ramp and notice the, the, the water come up three you know three inches from the day before and so that puts something else in play and, and they're they're just so dialed it's pretty incredible so, yeah, it is tough. To, locals always are tough. But they always have the advantage on a river. Yeah, it's, for sure. Especially Mississippi because it is spot on spot. Yes, it is. Uh, Missouri, not so much. It's bigger, not as shallow, you know, unless you're on the, the shoots at Lewis and Clark, where that is definitely a local. <laughs> has a huge advantage there. That's <laughs> just knowing where to, how to get to places, period, because it's Sandbar City. Uh, but you don't have that on Lake Erie, you know. Sure, right. as a charter captain or something, you're out there every day and have experience, but Sometimes, as you know from guiding in the past, that can also bite you in the butt. So, oh yeah, yep, you know too much. Yeah, exactly. Too much, too much memory. If you touched on it. We were talking about tournaments that a, you know, how the head to head thing was cool because it's just you, but now you're doing the the aim thing, uh, the river circuit with another person and having it's. You're right. It's a a teammate. Now you're a team. It's a whole new dynamic. You know, you're as a pro am. You're the pro. You got the amateur. You're making decisions. You, all the choices are Joe's. I know what I'm, my program, this is what we're going to do. You're told not to talk to me anyway or tell me anything, right, at the amateur level. I, I mean, you're going to tune them out, I imagine. It's like I do, like, I, you can tell me whatever you want. I don't I don't care. I, you're going to do your program. But the team yeah. thing, all right, what, what do you think? What do I think? Let's let's try to figure this out. And if you don't mesh very well, it's uh, it just it doesn't work. The chemistry has to be there. And it's hard to have two cooks in the kitchen. So yes, it that, is. Uh, it, 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 so at some point you either have you just have to say let's you know let's roll with what you want to do and if we're doing this this is you know I really want to work it this way or whatever and if everybody's cool then the day goes really good and and that's where guy was so good he's like a freaking mind reader he just he he I didn't even have to say words and he just knew what I was thinking or or knew how to you know if he. He just, he's just very he's he's a very intelligent person, and he was very easy to fish with. You're you know? thinking about picking up, moving. You look over, and he's already reeling in. Yes, he's like, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so I, but uh, that, that's when I fish my best is when I can just when when I'm not thinking about what somebody else is thinking, or when I when I'm not when there's no other thoughts other than your own, and and yep. you know, and just your rod in your hand. That's that's when I do my best. Yep, that's the fish whisperer comes out. I and I would struggle with that in NWT having that that co angler. You turn into guide mode sometimes, like you feel obligated, like I got to get this person on some fish, or they got to catch some fish, and I feel bad if we zero because I'm, a lot of people don't understand the zeros doesn't mean you didn't catch any fish. It just means you didn't keep any of the fish, which we're going to probably <laughs> you know this year is all about keeping the right fish with these these one man limits. Um, and it's also not. I mean, you know as well as anybody on Green Bay when you're up north, it's you're fishing for five bites. That's it, you know. And I can't lose any of them because that's probably all I'm going to get. Hopefully, I get seven or eight, you know. But you know, right. you're doing that rip and wrap or shiver minnow type bite, and your co angler may not get any of them or whatever the case may be, which is why we're doing three fish limits this year. Uh, but it's it, it can be boring for you know you're just not you're not throwing in numbers of fish, and it, it makes for a long day. Yeah. No, nope, that, that's okay with me though. I don't mind waiting stuff out. Patient is a patient man sport. So I have our first tournament or mine is the Cedar Shores tournament, uh, first part of April. And, and my other guide, Scott fishes that with me normally, but he had back surgery. So Randy Humble's going to jump in and fish you with it. So you said, trying to find the right teammate or Randy and I've been fishing in forever and we're complete opposites on 
chill and I'm not on the chill side and Randy's on the very chill side. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. It, it should be, you know, fun nonetheless. That might actually but help balance you out a little bit then. That's exactly why we stay on a team, you know, traveling and stuff. Cause it's, it's a complete balance. You know, I come in, I'm usually the first guy out, last guy to come in and, and Randy's been that way a little bit lately, but he's very methodical. He can do the, you know, he's one of the, I think he's a great crawler harness guy because he's super patient and that's too slow for me. I want to put a crank on, go faster or cast or get up there, you know, so I'll maybe cover a lot more water throughout the day and find, you know, more spots, but then Randy can go and, and kind of dial that thing in just cause he's, he's just more, more relaxed. I'm not. So <laughs> It's high speed and low drag, and it, it you know it, sometimes you get that opposite, and it's a good it's a good balance. So that's right, that's right. But, but it is tough to find those uh those tournament partners that mesh. You see it you see it change a lot, and you even see it at NWT with our our travel teams in a sense, right? I mean, you guys you had a, a great one for years with you and Blosser, and, you know, and King, and just and you guys are all still close and good friends, and I, and I, for the most part, all the anglers are are good guys, and I mean, there's very little. When the boat one takes off, it's a whole new deal. And then it's game on. But before and after all that, all good people, all good friends, all just, it's as good. For sure. Fishing community is pretty cool. Yes, it is. Nope, man, well, I'm looking we, forward to it. It'll yeah, be it'll be it'll be awesome to see you back out there on trail. And uh, I am I told King, I'm like, that close to hitting that, that river circuit, I, I like that. I like that idea. I like the format. You're not, I'm not, I'm only four or five hours, you know, east of most all of that. And Randy's over in Minnesota. And we're like, we like the river. I think we'd like to spend a little more time on the river. Um, the same entry fees are like 600 or something. No, it's like half that. I think oh, is it? Yeah. No, I'm thinking it, NBC is like, so they're like, cause they're one day or most of the time, right? One day. Yeah. One, one okay. day. And the, the, the river division has had smaller fields overall but no lack of talent in that field <laughs> so, yeah yeah exactly uh, it's it's still fun to go and try to compete against guys that you know know every rock and dam by name you know all it does is make you better i mean you know when an nwt or a, a bigger or maybe it's you know they do uh those bigger entries and aim, aim tried there on the river <laughs> when a bigger payout or a bigger circuit comes to town you've been fishing that thing you know there's fun fishing and going out with your buddies but when you're tournament fishing in a few days of practice it, this is a whole different level you know and yeah you can probably remember everything or you document everything and now you got your youtube so you've got some of it up there and thanks for sharing it with the world so all of us can can watch it and learn a thing or two about the river <laughs> as that all comes back into play later and you're like oh yeah i, I have these spots or when the water does this, I know not to do this or to do this. And, and you get certain baits styled in. Um, That's right. But of course, you know, you know how baits work. They work. Willow cats are a staple. They're going to work no matter what, when you're at the river, either, you know, this year and 20 years, most likely. But, you know, certain colors and other baits are going to have their their moments to shine and moments of uh, they suck. They just, it's just not working. The willow cat phenomenon is... <laughs> That's something else. There's, I don't think there's another bait in another part of the country. Well, I, I guess Creek Chub's out in your neck of the woods, but there's, but the, the, the willow cat is a special bait on that river. It, it, but the cool thing is, I, I, I was babysitting them throughout the throughout the year, and I, I take a handful and play with them. I mean, fish in other bodies of water will eat them, but they. I don't know what it is about them, but there's something, there's something magic to that bait. It's pretty yeah. great. I mean, it's, I have no problem handling them. I just grab them and hook them and throw them. I'm not allergic to them. I've been stung. I've sat on a bullhead before, so I'm whatever. Maybe that was my immunization shot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was little, we had stood up and had a bullhead fin stuck into your butt cheek. And, you know, I guess that was my like small, smallpox shot or something, but. I have no problem. So many other guys can't hardly, you know, they put the gloves on and, and handle them and, and they're little and they're floppy, feisty little things. Obviously a crit job is much easier to, to just grab it and hook on. But I think walleye, anything, pike and smallmouth and walleye at Sakakwea eat the crit chubs there, like walleye and smallmouth and drum and everything else eats the willow cats on the Mississippi. Yeah. There's no feeding yep. it. There's no, I mean, you know, maybe sometimes a little bit, but more or less it's just 
they're on they it. Attack. I mean, it's a different bite. It, it, the bite feels yeah. different when they hit it. Yep. But when I, I did learn that when you when you handle them, it's a it's like a gentle firmness. As long you know, yep. if you're if you're timid and scared to hold on to it, it'll get you. But if you if you're if you're assertive with it, but but gentle at the same time, I don't even know if that makes sense. Nope, they, I, they'll just kind of relax your hand and you stick the hook in and you're done. Yep, I grab them and don't squeeze them to where you're going to kill them, but you don't just lay it there because then it's going to flop around and exactly. get poked. So you got to have control with the firm firm grip on it. So and that, that's yeah, I mean this is how I grab a crick jump too. I guess reach into that bucket and I'm like, oop. Pick them up and, and hook them and go. And they're not as big as Crick Chubs, but they are expensive as hell. So you obviously want to handle with care. <laughs> so, yes, don't drop it overboard. And hopefully no, you get no. more than one fish on it. <laughs> yeah, they're dollar or two bucks a pop or whatever. But you can't, you better have them in your boat if you're going to a tournament on the Mississippi River. Period. Yeah. And if they, if tournament circuits banned willow cats, I, I wouldn't really care either. But oh, they yeah. are fun to use. Like if it's, if they're in play, you got to have them. But if they just said, "Don't," there's no willow cats in this tournament. I wouldn't care either because I, I've, I've got other ways to catch a walleye out there. As long as everybody else also doesn't have access to. Them. <laughs> right, exactly. As long as there's nobody can have them, that's fine. There's liquid willow cats, which hey, I'm, I, I have some. Um, I got the juice I've used, but I, I have the bag of liquid ones, and I never haven't even opened it up yet. But I bought them last time I was there. But I imagine they would work, but it certainly isn't the only way, right? Flies. So that brings us to the flies. Are you catching them on the Mississippi on the flies? Tell us about the flies and, and how are you using them? There's, and people can find your videos on how to tie them. Yeah. There's a bunch of ways to use them. I just have, I have a little river down the road from me that is really receptive to them pretty much most of the year. And so it, and it's just a, it's a fun little way to extract when, when they're bunched up in, in, in little areas. It's a fun way to just get a bunch of fish without having to keep rebaiting minnows. And it's, it's a very forgiving method too, because you're lobbing out a fairly heavy rig, but it fishes as finessey as anything you could possibly throw down there. Just a little puff of hair. And I'm no expert in pull, you know, the, the experts live on the Fox river in, yeah. in, the, in the Fox Valley, those guys on Winnebago that uh, that stroll those upstream and pump them and th th those those guys are really good at at pulling flies and that's where i started doing it um many years ago my but my buddy mark o'brien lives up there and he kind of he he showed me the ropes just on the, the the basic fundamentals of how to pull flies up there and you, and you can do so many things you can stick your rod in a rod holder and drag it upstream like you're pulling a bottom bouncer yeah. in a crawler harness you you know you can hold them and and pump them in place in sweet spots. And you can, and what I love to do most is cast mostly behind the boat and sweep through fishy areas with a lighter rig. Uh, that's my favorite way to, to fish them and just keep making repetitive casts through an area. But they're, they're so versatile and they get bit. I, I think, and down here, they don't, I don't always catch the biggest, the biggest bite of the day still usually comes on a piece of plastic or, or, or in, in minnows, but you can't, I've caught really big fish on flies. They, they'll still eat them too. Um, and it doesn't, and I've tried playing with different um, amounts of hair and, it, 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 you know, but it, it doesn't take much hair to get a big bite either. You know, you, you try to make, I was trying to tie these big profile. I don't even know the, the, fly streamer names well, i would say like a streamer probably or, or whatever yeah. i don't even know that what, it, what they're called but big poofy stuff and it doesn't get bit like a wispy you know mangled little puff of hair that you Something put with down. 10 strands of yes feather on it right you know that's all it takes it doesn't take i think the less the less it has down there the better it dances around or just sways around better or something i don't know what it is or maybe I just use it more and it gets bit more. <laughs> maybe that's it. There's always that. You know, why is this your favorite? Is this the only fluid that catches fish? You're like, what else are you using? Well, just this one. It catches that's all the fish. Much. I'm like, yeah, like well, that that's why it. it catches all your fish because it's the only thing you use. <laughs> Come on, guys. But, uh, that same thing. I never touched those and, and heard about it going into, a, you know, a bago years ago. And like flies, what, you know, it just, I didn't understand it until I got there. I guess I researched it. But get there, hit that bait shot by the park. Grab a handful of flies, tie them up on a three-way, and I remember when I first caught my first walleye to fly. I was like, oh, "This is pretty cool. This is neat." Yes, man. It is you know, really it is. cool, and it's a it, neat little bite because it's just a little yeah. flick. Yep. And but then when you load up and there's a five pounder on there, it's it, it's really cool. But the first few big fish I caught, 
a couple of the a couple of them rolled off when they got close to the boat and you know they they those those light wire aberdeen hooks that they use you know bend out pretty easy so i started I, that's when i just started tying my own and that little berkeley fusion aberdeen hook is just a little bit heavier gauge and i've been using that hook a lot for my flies and it, it's got the holding power you need for bigger fish when you're pulling them upstream but it's not it's not an old, it, you know, it's not too much hook to compromise the the action of the fly when it's down there. Right, because so, small hook is part of the gig, and they always, you know, those locals down there always told me not to set the hook because you're dealing with a super a razor sharp small hook, and you, tip, you know, like a bouncer, if you're just sweeping it, you're you're good, but you rip it, you're just gonna rip right through. Yes. Yep. So that that is one thing you, you need a forgiving rod when you're reeling them in. Um, you just play them easy. It's hard for me not to set the hook like I'm jig fishing when no. I'm casting it because as soon as you feel that whack, I'm I'm on them pretty good. But that hook does hold. I I haven't bent out that hook on a fish yet. I mean, I've I've lost fish on them, but it's but it, it isn't that that hook has been a difference maker for the, when I'm pulling flies or casting flies for sure. They, when they do bite it, they got the whole thing in their mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's there's nothing a little tiny you know feather, but yeah, they're they're smashing it. Right. Do you yep. uh? You loop yours. I loop my line with the loop and then have the fly so it has more give. Oh, sure. More kick? Yeah. I um, I usually snell my back one just because my hookup ratio is better when I when I snell it. I, 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 I believe it is anyways. But then the front one. I come, I come off a loop, a little T loop, but I, but it, but that's still on a snell connection, but it's got more freedom than the back, than the back one does. So then you've got two different actions going. Yeah. I, uh, tied them direct and then Winnebago and just experience and talking to local guys like, Nope, you got to put a three inch loop on that sucker and let it. And I'm like, all right. So I did that last time and I don't know, I still caught fish, got them both ways. And I probably caught more with a loop. I, I totally get it. It made, made sense. So. Sure. But every time I do it, I got to look up how to tie the knot because I can't remember how to tie the loop knot. <laughs> I, there's, there's, there's so many different ways. And, and those guys up there, you know, they all have their own, they're, they're very oh. set in their, in their ways. And I've experimented with all the different variations and I've caught fish on every variation. I, I, and I, and I haven't been able to establish a hard set rule on what gets bit. Cause then I'll just go, I, I mean, I, I'll snell two in line. So they're both stuck and kind of crooked and they, and you still lob it out there. And if the fish are there, they just, they'll eat it. It's uh, I think a lot of it is also how much action you're give you're, you're giving them on your, on your twitches, you, you know, if it, I, I, on your pumps as you're, as you're coming into contact, if you, if you're allowing a little bit of slack to initiate, the pump before you come in contact with the sinker it just kind of gives the whole thing a whip anyways i, I think you can gen you can impart some really good action in those flies no matter how they're tied onto your line i do and then you can change your line diameter and stiffness of the line that you choose to use to to, to tweak it too if you want so, you like them on a mono yeah or i use mono a lot of guys use but a lot of guys use fluorocarbon too so i uh, see the fish don't uh, you know the fish don't care but the action changes right yes. i mean I, the model makes sense on that on this technique just because it floats and it's gonna allow more of that flutter and, free and typically nature. when i'm when i'm casting them it's further behind the boat and so when you're further behind the boat the whole rig is collapsed more which wants to shove that whole rig into the bottom even more so if you've got a little bit of extra buoyancy thanks to the mono maybe that does you know help keep it up off bottom a little bit so so Salmo makes a, uh, I don't even know what it is, but it's their version of a fly. And I use it at Bago when it came out. I had some, I'm like, oh, this probably ought to work like a fly, even though it's it's not a fly. It's a like a one inch minnow plastic, kind of a hard oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. body, but then it's got fuzz. It's not, this isn't feathers. It's a chunk of cotton ball on the back that's supposed to be the fly. Looks like a fuzzy grub. Yeah, pretty much. And it, the, you know, the problem is the eye is really hard. So I would just stuck it on a hook and I got my biggest walleye bagel using that like a fly. Did you? Yeah. Up the, That's cool. What is that? 41 bridge? Is that the one? Yeah. yeah. Up there. I'm like, this should work. Drop it down and boom. I'm like, yeah. Which one? Fire tiger or pink and white? Uh, Orange. Orange. Gotcha. Yep, I think it is an orange fire tiger or something. But yeah, I have the pink ones. I have a fire, and there's an orange. But I don't. I like orange on those rivers for whatever reason. That's a good one. 
Mm -hmm. It is. That is. Uh, and those going there this year. Yeah, I like Bago, so I'm. I'm oh, you do? With, yeah. Well, I'm apparently <laughs> one of the only guys that likes Bago. I've never done well there, but I've had great practices. I've always caught a lot of fish. I like anywhere that's very versatile. So I like that's why I like rivers because there's you know your your trash fishing right. You, but Erie's great. You roll out your boat's pretty clean. At the end of the day, it's not you're you're not spin, unless you're maybe tying some spinners or something. It's a simple deal. You go to the rivers. You, you're you're breaking off 20 times a day on different stuff. You're re-rigging, retying, trying all off the wall type stuff, which I like. Um, you got jigs and three ways and cranks and trolling, you know, but like doubles and bago and Scott is kind of, those are places where you can do whatever your strength is. Yeah. You want to slip bobber, you want to cast cranks, jig and wrap, you know? So, and I think bagels a lot like that with, with the chain of lakes and you may, I mean, I remember, Two tournaments ago when I was there, all five fish I weighed in that day were all five caught doing something different. Nice. So then all your five. boat was like an atomic bomb went off in your boat at the end of the day because you got 30 rods <laughs> strung about everywhere. Yeah. I remember him saying on stage, it's like one was on a, while I was fly popping a one, I caught one on fly, caught one on slow death that was in a rod holder over here while I was fly, you know, with the, I just ran one fly, uh, caught one pulling a crawler harness, caught one cranking a reef. And caught one pitching a jig, you know. So like two came out of the river. Other ones, like two or three, came off a reef, but doing all different stuff on a reef. Put a planer board out and banging up flicker shad on rocks, and then pitching to it, and then pulling a crawler harness over them. Like, yeah, I don't know. This is yeah, exactly. The boat was just a disaster, <laughs> and it wasn't even a good weight. But it's like that's I had to do everything just to bring in a limit of fish. So, and I think the next day we got three or. Out of the five, I think three or four were all caught on different things. So, yeah, I like Bago. It, I think there's big fish. There's good fish there, and it just gets fish so much. It's so much pressure on that that body of yeah, water. Is. But I mean, last year there was there was decent weights, and I don't. It, it can and the field can always spread out. You know, depending on the time of of year you're there, which is which is nice too. So, Devil's Lake is you know another one. You've been there, Scott. We I love it. Cause it's the Missouri River, and it does set up to where you can do. A, number of different things it doesn't fish like a wahe or, or francis case where it's jigging or trolling scott we is you it's got enough humps and underwater structure where you can be casting cranks and and uh you know pitching jigs and swim baits and plastics and of course trolling lead but bottom bouncers jigging wraps and it doesn't even matter what time of year you go there you're going to catch fish so we get to go there at the end of may there for that aim shootout that'll be fun they're yeah. they're cutting us off just east of Shell, but we're launching up in Newtown. So, but that time oh. of year, that whole river could be chuck full of fish, still, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you're at the right place at the right time. So that yeah. will be, yeah, that'll be real good. And you don't, you can catch them clear down in Garrison, easy, you know, not easy, but not as easy as they are up on the upper end. Just like Francis Case, they migrate up, and the Chamberlain area of the dam is obviously great. But they're catching big fish on the lower end right now. Maybe Give me there. your prediction for first week of June. What does it take to what does it take to be in first place after day one on that tournament? Five fish. On Skakuya? Yep. Twenty five probably. You'll be post spawn, so Oh, yeah, maybe thirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poofta. Sweet. I would I'm say. looking forward even to that. that all of our NWTs, I've always had, I've always been, I guess I had a 14th and a 4th, and I always had like 22 and 17, and that, you needed 25 to 30 to be in the lead. Okay. Is that a two-day or a one? Two. That one's two, right? Because it's your- Two days, yep. Two days, so 22 plus a day to win it, or you have a big day and a mediocre day. Perfect. That you sounds can't fun. Go, you can't go past shell. You can go to shell. No, you can go past it. Uh, they Slides. Cut it off. What's yeah, yeah, this yes. Slides. I don't know yep. names and stuff. I did. I knew. I do know Shell. Yep. <laughs> Which um, should be far enough, and Shell alone has put out a lot of twenty-five to thirty-five pound bags. Perfect. Perfect. I don't know about June, but probably because you're at the mouth of Van Hook, which is its own. You could have a tournament and never leave Van Hook. I mean, I think it's huge. <laughs> yeah, there's only. 40 boats in that tournament too. So I don't think anything's going to be too piled on. 
it should be a lot of fun. I, yeah, I'm that, looking forward to it. Yeah, I know that that place is never not not fun unless it's blowing like crazy, of course. Um, but if that's the case, get down there, tuck yourself into Van Hook, and be fine. So right. maybe they'll move it and say, "Just launch out of here today, and and you'll all be <laughs> good to go." Unless it's coming up from the south, then it blows right in there. But it's still a river; you can still get on one side or the other, and and what have you. I mean, you were there when we did that first NWT and went what ninety miles from majority of people one way. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's most of the day was just driving your boat. Two hours, two two plus each day was was uh. I didn't. I went sixty eight miles. I remember on day two and caught my bigger bag, but there was definitely a lot of fish up there, and it was it wasn't hard, and it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. fun. It was very fun. That place is healthy. I'm, I always go there in the fall and fish the upper part, or there isn't. There's maybe a few, you know, eight pounders caught, but there's a lot of eighteen to twenty twos. By upper part, like the tobacco area? Yep. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. All the way up to almost to where the, the river begins. Last year, they took the river out of it. So it's Lewis and Clark State Park, which is Williston, basically. And our, we can't go past Newtown. Okay. So Newtown's the south boundary, the bridge. You can go under it, but you can't go past it, which is, I think, 30 miles from takeoff. So, But Very if nice. you got a 20, 30 mile an hour wind up or down river, yeah, no thanks, because that thirty miles becomes a an hour and a half, two hour drive, right? And, and you don't have to. There's fish; they're just scattered all over at that at that time. Nice. So that's the the Big Ten tournament. And that's usually the first week in October. Um, you gotta come up and fish it because it's a good one. It's a thousand dollar entry, thirty thousand a first. Wow. What's the field usually? Like hundred uh, boat? boats limited. We haven't, we had a hundred the first year and then COVID, it got canceled last minute. Their governor wouldn't let nobody go. And then I think we had 80 some, then we were down to like an upper sixties and then back up into eighties. And now they're, it's got a lot of sponsors ran really, really good. Super smooth. I mean, in and out, you pull up, you, I mean, you're in, you're in a boat or guys in your truck and he gets out and weighs the fish quick you know, and then back in the boat and off you go. Um, nice. yeah, they got a lot of volunteers. Jeff runs that thing and it's, I mean, a hundred percent, I don't even know what it is. I think he's over a hundred percent of entropy. It's, it's the top, the big 10. So only the top 10 get paid. Um, and then they have day money, big fish pots. So if you have a hundred field, you know, tournament, you got 30 grand at first, but you could be, you know, 40 plus thousand with all the side pot stuff. So sweet. Yeah, it's it's good, and, and the state park is just it's it's one of the best tournaments of fish every year. Is why I go back. So, and then I think last year Jim Carroll was the MC, but last year he's like, "Damn it, I want to get in." So he fished <laughs> it last year with Heiser. Um, Majorkman's fished it before. I've seen him the last couple of years. Um, it's been just a few. A Hoyer fished it one year. So there's been guys got a dip in their their toes in it. So nice. yeah, you go up there in May and June and you're like, I love this place. Well, come back in October. So, okay. But it's October. You don't know. It could be 70. It could be, it could be snowing and in, in, in the same Kaku, day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, I, I rolled in there once and I went, Oh, there's snow on the Hills. And then it was, uh, it wasn't nice. It was cold. And then the next year was the most beautiful, most beautiful two days of fall. It was literally 60, 70 degrees and flat calm both days. And the last two years were, 20 mile an hour winds, whatever river. It's that sounds you know, about right for out there. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was manageable. It just kind of took you a little longer to get to and from. So you just allowed a little more time and type of deal. Or I think if you were trolling, you might've, might've just kind of picked up and made the, the run with, you know, with the wind. Cause going into it was just a, a little too much. Anyway, I think I was drifting, drifting and dragging and uh, pitching and dragging jigs and crick chubs. So awesome, awesome, fun play. So, that's doing cool. all the YouTube stuff over there. Where can people find Joe's YouTube? It's uh, it's just Joe Okada. Um, Joe uh, Okada yeah, fishing or something? No, just Joe Okada. Just Joe Okada. I'll put a link down below so people can go yeah. check out. You oh, got fly cool. videos. You got river fishing videos. Yeah, I'll put up a summary <laughs> of this last one of from uh, from Spring Valley where we didn't do squat, but maybe you can still learn a thing or two. I just I think I'll just try to. Whatever tournaments I fish this year, I'll just try to share, you know, mindset and strategy and action throughout the tournament. And, you know, if maybe it, maybe it'll help people 
that are either interested in tournament fishing or just enjoy it and um that'll be there for you but yeah i think uh I, I still don't even have the full schedule laid out for me yet this year, but anytime there's an open opportunity and an, uh, an open field, I will be there playing. So, Well, we fun. look forward to, I used to, I would say if you were a new guy, I'd be like, awesome, we can take your money, but I, Joe Okada coming back in isn't that case. I'm like, ah, damn it, Joe's fishing. You know, it's <laughs> like if Blosser comes back, I'm like, damn it, he's here. You know, but that's okay. It's good. Uh, it's uh that just makes all of us that much better. I try to run my GoPros like you're doing at practice and tournaments and try to get a little something out there. It's a pain in the ass. Um, I'm what, you know, you know, yeah, trying to, you know, to get, to keep the batteries going, have a big enough SD card or just making sure your camera don't end up in the drink. And really the biggest problem I have found, which I think I have resolved is just a microphone. Cause we can all do videos where it's just a bunch of music and a guy's fishing, but yeah, you know, I mean, yours are great. And, putting some commentary to the the method to the madness right so i think that's what people learn from you know there was a there was a few year gap where you really had i mean so like when i was when i was guiding a lot getting to go to a tournament was almost uh like a like a vac a fishing vacation yep. for me because you're it's all about i mean you get to put you get to have your tunnel vision and just worry about catching a walleye then and then when you, when you're trying to you know create a, a create video content while you're trying to compete against some amazing anglers, you're compromising both both yeah. both avenues. And I've just learned you know I'll, I'll get what I get and and we'll make something out of it. But it's 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 really hard to take your eye off the ball and and it, it's 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 a very it's it's challenging. You know it's um but it's, I think, I think some people enjoy it, so I'll continue to continue to do it. But yeah, it is, it is hard to try to do both really well all at the same time because you have it's, to put all of your mental energy into one thing if you want to try to do it right. Yeah, you know, even just self filming in general when you're doing everything by yourself, which I do, and I'm sure you're doing the same way. From what am I going to go out and film today? How which camera? How am I going to do it? Okay, and then you got to go post production, edit, and, and get it up there, but. It's so much better if you're trying to do something on the water and there's somebody else who can run the camera for you. It just, everything's so much better and easier. But like I said, <laughs> tournament, there's days where I, I don't even get at all. The second day or the first day gets missed because, you know, it's cold when you take off and everything was good to go. But then your batteries went to crap and you didn't want to mess with, I mean, you're just, I'm here to do this. This is a bonus. You know, <laughs> a, a trolling bite's one that's a little easier to manage because you have that that time and your hands are free. But when you got a rod in hand and, and jigging it, it's like I'm hooked up and, Hey, hit play on that or record, would you? You know, it's, you know, I think this might be the new rule for the co to both this year is you're also the cameraman today, buddy. So <laughs> that was nice yeah. with, uh, with head to head. You literally had a, a okay. professional in the boat with a live camera on you all day to capture everything. And that was, then you just fished and you just fished your thing. That was, I, I tell people all the time, that was a, that was the funnest year tournament fishing I ever had. That was a that's time. what I hear from about all of you that did it. So hopefully they get that. I mean, they're doing it again locally. Um, you know, maybe it'll take off and, and it'll, it'll come back to fruition out there and, and happen. Cause that's probably where the walleye world needs to, needs to make some changes and, and go right. The content is great, but people want it now. I mean, bass has obviously embraced it, Maduna for a long time. And that's why that continues to grow and be big. And a walleye world is pretty stagnant. We go to a lot of the same places. We're doing the same thing. The TV show maybe comes out three months later. You know, there's a few of us that try to capture it on camera and get something out as soon as possible. You get updates from the field, you know, at night or in the morning, you know, for takeoff or on their way home. But you don't get to see what happened. And we're really not great at sharing how that happened. Some some are, but some aren't. And people want to know how how'd you win it. I don't care. I'll, I can give you a GPS coordinate because they're not they're going to be there the next day right you either you caught them all or just if you're really like me i can't catch other people's fish so it's like have at it knock yourself out uh you know especially if it's somewhere 10 hours away that I'm not going to for another year or two or five so that is that is a tough it's a it's a contradiction in your mind because there's there's certain things that you work really hard on and spend lots of time and money trying to develop 
and you, and part of you just says, why don't you wait until you can utilize this for all the work that you've put in to try to figure it out? But then at, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, you know, pe- you're exactly right. People appreciate sharing things and I'm, I'm i'm learning that as i as i go on here but for a, a lot of years you know you wanted to try to keep some things you know tight to you to for the competitive you know for for the competitive reasons but at the same time that that, that keeps the public in the in, in the dark as they're trying to learn as well so it's it, you're almost just better off just sharing sharing what you know and, and growing everybody along with you so yeah you want to monetize that to say <laughs> the longest yeah. amount as possible if it's a, a rip and rap bite type green bay thing right you know until until the, the the word's out but then again if i don't share this information or whatever it is that company's not moving any product right. whether it's sponsor beers or not right but we got to do everything to help the industry move the product and keep people to know and the more people that are catching fish the more people that are going to go fishing and then all that snowballs into the whole Pittman Robertson or uh, Dingle Johnson funding and and the conservation efforts. I mean, it's just it's just the whole. That's what what makes the full circle. Okay. And then getting you know right your kids, my kids, everybody into it to keep this going along. Because we're not going to do this forever. We're going to do it as long as we can, which we like to think is forever. But the reality is, it's it's not. Oh so, no. no, we got it. it. I'm thankful that we got to. I'm thankful that we got to experience the tournaments in their forms when we did, you know, who knows what the tournament scene will even look like five years, 10 years from now, who who knows, maybe it'll be awesome. Maybe it'll, the landscape will be completely different, but I mean, I had my sights set on competing against, wanting to compete against the best fishermen around since I was a a little kid. And I'm very fortunate that I, I got to experience that when I did. So, and it ain't over. So no, not at a all. young man. And there's, there's a lot of fish in the head of you. There's a lot of turbots. So it just takes it sometimes just cracking one or two of those to help boost and get you, you know, it just, like we we're saying earlier, this isn't cheap, you know, and, it, and it's not getting cheaper. Right? No. It's just getting more and more expensive. So we have the casino cup and, and up into the North Dakota, a little bit in South Dakota. And I always tell the guys that live in that area, I'm like, I don't, I wouldn't, I would just, I wouldn't leave that area. I mean, these are, pretty good payouts and low entry fees. I'm like, just do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Create your own media. Cause it's not like there's a whole lot more. I mean, the NWT obviously has a show, you know, but for the most part, walleye world, we have to create our own, our own content and create your own media, make your own buzz. You got to do it. your own. Uh, you're on right. your own. Yeah. Right. And, and you're doing it and I'm doing it. And I had somebody ask me, they're like, well, who's got the, you know, pro walleye guys have the best YouTube channel. I'm like, there, there isn't, we got the Tom Bowleys and these, but they're not tournament anglers. So there's awesome content, but but just like you said, it's so hard to do that by yourself because I'm I'm here to do this, but it's I'm not focused or 100 percent focused when I gotta hit record or pick the camera off the floor or you know the yellow text great I can turn that thing on and just hit play and let it run, sure you know all day long if as long as everything stays connected. But I don't have the mic attached to that one, so then you just got a photo of a guy just fishing all day and it's. Some people like that. I don't know. Compromise at the end of the day for some reason. I just went. I just. I had to. I had a bad. I had a bad SD card. I had to parse through yesterday, just last night, trying to pull some Spring Valley footage out. Just the the way sometimes the cameras even write data to the card. It's like, come on, that whole day just (laughs) gone. I had that with a a drone thing, and it didn't encrypt the card properly, and it was just junk. And I'm like, this cheap ass drone, (laughs) this cheap ass card. I'm like, this stuff don't work. No. Now I have a new one. It's still cheap, but it downloads directly to your phone because you run it with your phone. So I'm like, oh, we'll see. I don't, the quality of the picture ain't great, but whatever. Whatever. No, I'm spending $4,000 on camera gear when you're just doing it yourself or, you know, YouTube ain't, ain't monetizing that much, so it ain't happening. So. <laughs> There's there's a point when you can do that. I think like Bully's gotten there where he's got a guy to travel with him now and, and do the camera stuff, and you can really put out some some nice stuff. But when you're doing it by yourself, it uh, this is it. This is what you get, folks. So you know, it's all Joe's, good. It's all it is. As long as it's a transaction, anyways. As long as they get something out of it, and that's what I try to put in. 
I try to sneak things in there that if you're if you're paying attention, you'll you'll get something out of it. And that's what my that you know that's my appreciation for their time. So yep, no, nope. it's, it's good. good. While we were talking, I just had a YouTube comment pop up. I don't dare read it because it, it's one or the other. It's this sucks, and I don't know what you're talking about, or something like that, or or thanks, awesome, appreciate showing me that thing, or something. You know, a lot of times, like, oh yeah, I saw you out there, but you know, once in a while, you get that guy that no matter what you do, it's just it's not good enough for him, and you didn't tell him exactly how many feet of line you had out and what kind of knot you had <laughs> tied and and everything. You're like, whatever, you know. Whatever. So it's all good. All right. Well, we've been uh, jaw jacking here for about an hour, Joe. If you could leave all of these fellow listeners with a tip, a nugget, what's Joe's special sauce and secret to help them out in their angling journey, what would it be? It would be, I would just encourage you to jump out of your comfort zone, whatever that is at, at, at your current fishing place and jump out of your comfort zone this year and exp and and spend a, spend the fishless time and hours exploring something that eventually will turn into some sort of success if you put your time in to do it and just enjoy that that gratifying feeling of things coming together when it finally does I don't, whatever skill set it is whatever new technique that you're tr want to try just Spent, you know, you explore your online resources, watch your videos uh, to, to, to get a baseline, but then go put some time in on the water and experience what that feels like to really put something cool together through your own hard work. And there's not that that's where I find my joy in fishing. And it's if it wasn't for to keep pushing to do to, to to do that and to keep experiencing that feeling, this would get old really quick. So I think. uh I, and, I, and I don't know what that what that is, and that's that's different for everybody. It, it, you know, I want to get, I want to be a better vertical jig fisherman. You know, so I'll I'll go do more of that and and, and work on different moves from there. But you know, wh whatever it is, just, uh, it just go ahead. No, you're exactly right. It's like when you catch a fish on a fly you tied. Yeah, that's it. That's the feeling. It's awesome. When you go catch your bait that you then use as your bait to catch fish, right? I mean, it's you pour your own jigs and you start catching stuff on a product, you know, or device that you made is, is just that. It's so it's a bullet. You make your own or you pack your own bullets for hunting or whatever the case is. And that's what you, you shoot with. It takes that, that catch or kill or harvest to another level. Cause you took it from the beginning, like a deer hunt. I, I look at it that way. It's like, all right, I'll, I'll make these bullets. I use that one shot. And now I'm eating jerky. And I did that, all of that from the beginning to the finish. Yes. That's way it's, more it's gratifying. So fun. It, it, enjoy. Maybe that's the nugget. Enjoy the fishless hours as you try to reach whatever goal you set your sights on, because that that's where the that's that's where the best part is. So, yep. nope, nope, you're right. That's what I got. That's what we got from the man himself, Joe Okada, gives it to you straight, and that's uh, that's right. Be patient, right? Those if you work hard, those things will all they'll come through, and it and it feels that much better when it's done it i had a boring day day so i make some chocolate chip cookies and i tell you i made them so they're pretty damn good i mean if my <laughs> wife made them they'd probably be better but it's that gratification of the, the start to finish thing so that's right man that's right it is nothing it better. Is awesome nothing better but well, i look forward to seeing you out there this year it's been a lot it's been a it's been a long time since you've been out there on trail with us anyway for a, a more than one or two and uh i can't yeah. i'd wish you luck but you know i wish you the second or third best luck out there. And <laughs> I'll take what I can get, man. I'm pretty good at seconds. So. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You've uh, you've been in that hot seat plenty, so yeah. that's uh, <laughs> it's a good feeling. But you know, when you don't finish in it, it kind of sucks. But hey, second place pays a hell of a lot more than third and and thirtieth. Uh, so that's that's certainly something to be proud of there. So. All good. Um, thanks for your time today, Joe. Uh, thank all you guys for tuning in to Real Talk Fishing. And you can find this on, if you're watching it, you're right here on the YouTube, the Walleye Guys YouTube page or the Walleye Guys Facebook page. We'll put some links down below so you can go check out Joe Cotta's YouTube and follow him on his social. Stay in tune on what he's got going on 
this season as he recaps some of the tournaments, like the Spring Valley that he just got done with. Good or bad, it's all good information, and, and Joe and myself and others love to share that with you all. So you can listen to this while you're driving to your next tournament on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google Podcast platforms. Get you all hyped up to uh, get on the water and get competitive. So uh, thanks again, Joe. And thank thanks, all you for tuning in, and we will see you on the water. Thank you.